Yes. I would love to bet with you that at some point you will not work in that particular field you're trained in. Here at Michigan Tech, you actually, actually learn skills and competencies which are transferable. And, and in today's job market, it's very likely that you will not have only one job throughout your career, but several jobs. And the basis for success is what you learn here on campus. All those competences in your particular field, but you will probably switch fields throughout your career. That brings me to another point. We're talking today about careers, not jobs. Although I have to say, when I was ready for the job market, for my career, I thought about, I need a job, anything, right? Uh, I didn't have clearly a, a specific plan which covers my whole career, my life. What, why did I actually go to graduate school and what do I really want to do with my degree? So what we are talking about today is not your next job. We're talking more about your whole career, which partially <coughs> intersects with your whole life. What is the purpose of your life? What is the purpose of your education right now? And what do you want to get out of that experience? And um, when we talk about that topic, I'm always wondering, um, Corey, would you be willing to share with us, for example, what your career dream is or was when you finished your graduate experience in chemical chemistry? <clears throat> my career dream when I finished my graduate studies is, is actually very different from what it is now. So I'll tell you what it is now. Uh, my career dream currently is to work with PhD STEM graduate students and postdocs at the intersection of business innovation and career development. So for me back then, well, I grew up in a household. My father was a professor. And I thought, okay, with a PhD, I will be a professor at some point, right? But I discovered about myself throughout my training, throughout uh, my professional experiences, that I'm really, that at the heart is actually the big passion to help others, to help others in the STEM fields. So my career dream is to excel as someone who facilitates the career and professional development. Their, their own career and professional development. Thank you, Jörg. So we told you a little bit about our career dreams, but all of this workshop, that doesn't matter. What we're here to really discuss and, and really dig into is your career dream and how the resources and strategies that are inherent in individual development plans can help you reach your career dream. So for our first activity, what we're going to discuss is what is your current career dream? So Jorg is passing out the workbooks and on page two, take a few minutes to think about it and write down what is your current career dream? Not what kind of job you want, but what do you want for your future career? So take a couple minutes to think about it, write it down, and then I'm going to ask if there will be a couple of people, a few people that will be willing to share. Okay, is there someone in the room that would feel comfortable standing up and sharing with us what their career dream is. Don't be shy. We will not hold you accountable because as you know, as you heard, career dreams can change throughout your life. But it's for sure helpful to have some kind of idea where you're heading, in which area. Any volunteers? Yes. Oh, sorry. All right. So um, I have two. So a really unrealistic one, which is I still want to be an astronaut. 
Um, <laughs> the slightly more realistic one, which is I'd quite like to be a lecturer with some kind of STEM outreach, particularly girls in science. Um, so Excellent. Thank you. We had another volunteer here. Yep. <clears throat> this is my career goal as I'm a little bit uh, more advanced along my path than some of my colleagues here, but um, I've changed back and forth. But I, I... In your research environment, right? And which tactics do you use to advance right now in your current role? So we're talking right now about the second column today. And I know some of you will be very fast. If you're very fast, then you could start filling out the column, this third column. Where do you want to be in two years? And we will just give you maybe a total of three minutes because we know we could spend actually one and a half hours, two hours to write everything down. But just to, to, to get your brain started to thinking about those items. And again, it will, could take two, three hours to complete the whole table for you. I, I think at this point we should just stop. We got your brain um, thinking about those questions. And we would like that you quickly turn to your neighbor at the table, introduce yourself if you don't know each other. And just share with your neighbor what you're doing right now and what do you think the future holds for you? Where do you want to be? In two years, or some of you completed already the very the, the fourth column, where do you want to be in eight years? Share with your neighbor what you're doing right now and where do you see yourself in a couple of years? Also, sorry, I have to interrupt before you get started. To have an even better conversation, share with your neighbor which tactics have helped you to get there where you are right now and what made it challenging and what you expect the challenges will be to reach your career step in the future, either in two years or in eight years. What are the expected challenges? Which tactics might help you? Please start a discussion. <laughs> this is actually one of the fun parts, just to observe all the conversations. Everyone is so engaged in, in, in the discussion. Um, very likely you started really with where you are now, what you're doing, and there, there's, there's some smiles talking about future plans. I'm wondering if someone would like to share with us what you heard, what you, you envisioned for yourself. What, what was the take home message from your volunteers who would like to share something? I learned that you can have eclectic dreams because one of my uh, members of the group here was interested not only in like bio or, um, yeah, biology and nanoparticles and that, but they also had an interest in fashion <laughs> at the same time. So it's like, that's kind of neat. Eclectic. Did everyone on here? That comment, it's a wonderful comment. An eclectic dream, combining nanoscience with fashion, right? That's something what we shouldn't uh, uh, keep out of the loop. What, what are the activities which re-energize us? And is there a way to combine that maybe with our professional training? Some other items, what I heard walking around taking a break from a crazy PhD experience. <laughs> yes, you deserve a break. PhD work is hard and sometimes very exhausting. But that said, very often what comes afterwards, it is demanding in its own way. So there is no job out there which is easy. You always have to work, you always have to put energy into your work. It will be different for sure, but um, it would be great to have at least a couple of weeks to re-energize. That's true. Another thing, um, I would like to network. Networking will be very likely very important for getting. So let's just take, unpack that a little bit. What happens if we only have two of those overlap? Say our personal strengths overlap with our values. 
So there's a job or a career that you have your personal strengths, you've got skills that are really good for that particular career, and they overlap with your values, but there is no job market opportunities. What do you have? Oh, unemployed. Unemployed. Exactly. Maybe you have a nice hobby that you can do on the weekends, for example. Okay. So let's just take the other scenario. What if your values, those things that are most important to you, overlap with your job market opportunities? But you have no overlapping strengths with that. Then what happens? Unsatisfied. Unsatisfied because yep. <laughs> exactly. So there might be your insatisfaction, but probably there would also be the unsatisfaction for those that are in STEM fields. We launched that in 2015. There's also my IDP that's available. That's also relevant for biomedical sciences. Imagine PhD. Um, there's a social, sci uh, social science for humanities. Imagine PhD was just launched, and that is also relevant to uh, graduate students and postdocs. There are also IDPs developed by academic institutions and programs. You have one available that Deb's going to send to you. And here's a list of other institutions that have their own IDPs. ACS resources, right? There are a number of career development resources that are applicable to helping you strengthen your skills and find out about the job market opportunities. I'm just listing you the main ones that we know are freely available and accessible through www.acs.org. There's also a list of them on page four of your booklet. So after this workshop, if you have a chance to check out chemidp.org, remember it's free resource. All you need is an email address. You do not need ACS membership to access this. And it is really built on the concept of these four parts. The ability to assess yourself, strengthen your skills, set goals, and explore careers. There's a part of the Chem IDP that is, I would say, probably the most relevant, and that is coming up with your plan. What is your plan for getting to your career dreams? So I talked a little bit about IDPs, but there are main success factors for IDP use. If you go onto the site, MIDP.org, you can easily go through the self-assessment, the skill strengthening, find some different strategies and resources that maybe you didn't know about that you can use or read or access. But if, if you go through the whole site and you just do that for like 15 minutes, how much do you think you're going to call? Maybe you'll get the tip of the iceberg. It's a thing about IDPs, use is in order for them to be effective and useful to you, they're going to take these three components. It's an iterative process, which means that it's not a matter of using the tool or the form or the IDP that comes from your university once. It's about returning to it, <coughs> assessing how you've changed, how and how you continue to develop and what you want in the future and how that's changed. It requires a sense of agency. How many of you know what sense of agency means? So sense of ag agency is just a fancier way to say ownership. Taking charge of your career because it's not your advisor's career and it's not your parent's career. It's your career. So the individual development plan is there to help you get a sense of agency 
or ownership and control over what you want in your life. And last but not least, making individual development plans useful takes interpersonal interactions, the discussion with your mentors, discussions with your advisors, discussions with your colleagues, talking to them about what you want in your career and the next steps that you want to take and getting that advice back of how you can make the most of where you're at and where you want to go. So for the next part, um, we would like to explore the career development process a little bit more in depth using your specific scenario, you, right? So we will go back to the workbook, page three, and we will continue to work on that particular table. And as you do that, think about which, which steps have you taken or are you taking right now what tactics have helped you to make those steps and will make will, will help you to do those steps? Consider the IDP process while you're completing the table. Again, self-assessment. Have you ever done that in one way or another here on campus um, using any online tools or conversations with uh, uh, colleagues? Have you really thought about what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What do you have to build up to get to the next career level? What are your immediate goals? What are your long-term goals? And have you actually explored all the career options out there? So we will take again three minutes to continue to work on that particular table. And then we will have a brief discussion with our neighbors again, and then we will be back with a open discussion. So, for now, uh, stop writing, turn to your neighbor, and you might want to chat about what components of the career development process are you already engaging in right now, and what components should you tackle in the future? And we will regroup in about three, four minutes. Okay, I think we should continue as a large group. I'm curious if someone would like to share highlights you discussed. Any volunteers sharing some highlights of your discussions? Sure. So you're asking what components are you doing and what should you be doing? What if you're kind of coming up blank and you're not sure what you should be doing? I, I, I channel this game. <laughs> very, very, very good. So um, you, you should look at the uh, four components of the individual development plan, which is really there to help you figuring out um, a plan how to improve your own career professional development. So have you ever really sat down, thought about your own values, thought about, okay, I'm now in my graduate studies for three years, um, am I at a skill level which would help me to get to the next career level I envision? What about my communication skills? Did I have the opportunity to present a conference, present on campus. If there's a just small numbers of presentations, you might want to think about okay, what can I do to increase and then get more of experience and refine my communication skills? Or you could uh, think about okay, which other ways are there to improve my communication skills, right? Is there a Toastmasters club on your campus? If that is a public speaking club where you could practice uh, um, any kind of uh, oral presentation skills. Right? So thinking about in depth on honestly, what are your weaknesses? And what can you do to really uh, turn them around into potential strengths or make them less weak? Okay. Also, did you really 
set specific goals for yourself in your field. <coughs> when you want to be in one year, we will talk about goals um, and how to set those in a minute using the SMART system. Maybe some of you heard about the SMART goals <coughs> before. So when thinking about those four components of the career planning process will be critical. So when I walked around, I heard a lot about, okay, I have to become better in this and that. Communication was, I'm not sure which table that was, there was one, one item. Um, also, I have to talk to my advisor actually about my career. Um, your advisor will help you to get your PhD or your degree, um, but typically, um, mentors are potentially more helpful to really uh, get to the next career level. Your advisor can be a very good mentor, but the more individuals you have in your mentoring team, the more likely it is you will get the right amount of recommendations and uh, right amount of discussions to help you to find out what you have to do next. In your career. Another thing what I heard was, well, actually, I have to figure out in which career areas I can work with my degree. Career exploration. So I would challenge you and tell you that with the competencies you learn here on campus, you could work in any career area. You could work in academia, right? You could become a professor. But there are not only professor positions in academia for PhDs, right? You could become an, an administrator. You could become a, a grant writer. You could become a science writer in academia. And you're still in, in, in that wonderful academic environment, which you love as a graduate student, but not focusing on a faculty job. There's staff scientist positions, which are very, can be very rewarding as well. You could take your competencies and work for the government. There are tons of jobs out there, research-focused jobs science administrative jobs, science writing jobs, program director jobs at the National Science Foundation, the science assistant jobs at, national, at the National Science Foundation or any other federal agency. You could do that. You just have to be aware of those opportunities and understand what it means to work in that area. And if that particular area overlaps with your values and your skills. You could work in the nonprofit world. Well, I worked for many years in academia. I was a faculty member at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine, switched to Columbia University. Now I'm at a nonprofit organization, and I love it. I always thought, maybe I will miss doing research. But for me, I didn't regret doing research for one day. It's great to discover, discover that about yourself, but it takes courage to do that step and actually to test it out and to think about, what if I don't like it? Is there a way back? You will hear very often, very likely from faculty, but if you leave academia, no, you will not be able to do that. <coughs> but in fact, there are many examples out there um, where individuals left academia and come back. You will not get a faculty position at MIT if you leave academia, right? At a large R1 institution because you have to keep up with your research efforts, but there are ways to go to a liberal arts college to establish yourself as a fantastic educator. There are ways to do that, right? And, and, and um, tactics which help you to get there. There's, it's not a one-way street. You're always flexible with your career plan. So um, before we move on, I'm just wondering if you could have a little poll here in the room. So I have a list of core competencies which are associated with getting a PhD in STEM. And if you feel, yes, that is my super strength, just your super strength, lift your arm. Science and technological literacy, two things who's really strong. So do you know your research area in depth? And there I would assume a lot of people would raise their arm. Who, who feels that, that you're really good at that? Let's say that this way. 
One, two, okay, three. Don't be shy because very likely there is no one else in your particular area who knows so much about your particular research pro project than you, right? Do you feel that you have excellent leadership skills? Very nice, very nice. Um, project management skills, strength, very good. Let's take maybe just two more. Um, intercultural teamwork skills. Very good. And the last one, budget management. Ooh, that's, that's really amazing. So you can see uh, a lot of your colleagues here on campus feel that this environment helps them to get those competencies and skills. You're in a great environment. Now, the question is, setting goals as the next uh, step, and I think Corey will take us, uh, no, sorry, we will talk first about career exploration, therefore we have this wonderful red box okay. around <laughs> the career exploration part. One way to explore careers, especially if you're in the chemical sciences, is to use, for example, ChemIDP. So, okay, um, there are many online tools out there. One is ChemIDP, where you could really explore careers by job sector. You see here at the very top, if you can scroll a little bit down. Down. Okay, up. Oh, up. Probably the, the, the smog that doesn't really work quite well. So you have the different industries at the very top, and let's just navigate into an industry role, support, you could work in human resources, technical support, or is clicking everything, maybe even in sales and marketing. Let's see what, what comes up in those online tools. Where do you want to be two years from now? And identify one long-term goal that will help you reach where you want to be eight years from now. So just take just a couple of minutes to think about that. Maybe the short term one is easier for you at this stage. Where do you want to get the MBA from? Is it Columbia University? Where you have to pay a couple of hundred thousand dollars probably for that degree? Or do you go to a smaller university in the United States? Do you want to get your MBA maybe abroad? There are many other schools out there which are maybe more uh, 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 or they're not as expensive to get. But again, what is the value of the MBA degree from the different schools? So there's a lot of uh, um, consideration which has to be uh, taken in, uh, into consideration when you, um, when, when you map out um, uh, where to get the MBA from. So what is the value from the, the different institutions? How would a specific MBA degree from a specific institution help you actually to get your dream job? for example, or to fulfill your dream career. What stage will you be applying? Where will you be applying? Where are you going to be? Will you have to be located? So that was a great example. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone else that would like to share a specific goal? Maybe a short term. Does anyone have a short term? Oh, thank you. Sorry, I spoke. Um, so, like my shorter term goal was to write to like complete the article journal article that I'm writing at the moment, and a very short term is in the next by the end of this year, and then <coughs> in order to get to my like two year goal or beyond that is is to write two more personal papers in the next so two or three years. Let's take, let's take the last one, which I understood. So two first author papers in two years. Yeah. Which sounds ridiculously optimistic now that you say it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> two first author papers in two years. Is that specific? 
how could we make it more specific? Is there a way we can make it more specific? For example, which journal? Which journal? Um, or journals? So, uh, Journal of Geophysical Research and uh, Bulletin of Volcanology. There we go. So, putting in the journal. Did you hear what she said? Uh, 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 so, um, JGR and uh, Bulletin of Volcanology. Bulletin of Volcanology. But I will just keep it here by include the journal, <laughs> <laughs> include the journal, and also think about uh, which kind of articles you could publish in those journals. They might be research articles, they might be a communication, there could be maybe a review, right? Be very specific what you would like to publish in that particular journal. Is it measurable? Yes, it's very specific to is it achievable? <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Optimistic. You know, I think like other people manage it. I'm not sure. <laughs> but yeah. So. It sounds pretty much achievable um, as long as you started all the experiments already, right? So, so it really depends on the current research progress. But let's say, yes, it is achievable. Is it relevant? How is it? Does it share effects on its So I, I want to get a, a, like an assistant professorship, and my biggest thing is holding me back is, is not having enough qualifications. So yes, that was very relevant. Very relevant to your career things and your career goals. Excellent. What about timing? I might suggest for this one, you said within two years, but to actually give yourself, if you need those two papers published by certain time to include at the time that you're applying for. Yes, it's a message of the by October of that year. <laughs> so the submission process, adding the submission, uh, the submission deadlines. The dates. I will have it by October 2nd of 2019. So basically, that uh, specific goal could um, be publish two first author papers, one communication, one review article. In the journal of <laughs> um, in two years, <coughs> comma, by submitting the research art the, the review article by September first, two thousand twenty, and the communication by October first, two thousand twenty, something like that. So really putting numbers on paper and making it really, really specific to have a little bit more clarity. Okay. So this is just the beginning of a career planning process for you. And career planning is hard. It's hard work. It's hard work not for the university, because the university has a budget, can invite speakers and try to give you resources. It's not hard for your advisor. It's not hard for your family who could just say, oh, just get a job. It's hard for you because you have to make decisions. You have to make decisions based on your values. You have to understand yourself. You will very likely not have a fulfilling really truly fulfilling career if you don't know what you really are searching for, right? If you don't know what your strengths are. And interestingly, I just read an article about, okay, the strengths and weaknesses, and it is an illusion that someone really could turn a weakness into a super strength. Well, some might argue, that's not entirely true, but some say, okay, if I'm really not good at public speaking, and I, I'm trembling 
right? If I'm in front of an audience, then you might not want to consider certain careers because it's unlikely that you will be the best speaker on earth at some point, right? So think about how you could actually leverage your strengths because every, everyone has strengths, right? Think about levering your leveraging your strengths, but also thinking about, thinking about how to develop some of those skills you consider being suboptimal to get a little bit better, maybe a little bit more. So ultimately, you're also responsible for figuring out which options there are. Where can you actually work with your degree in mechanical engineering, chemical engineering, in social sciences, right? Can you transfer from one discipline to the other? You have to figure out that, maybe you have to figure that out by, 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 by doing it, right? That working as, let's say, a regulatory affairs scientist in industry in company A in one particular working group will be different from working at company B in a working group because, hey, you have to work with people. And if those individuals, <coughs> if you can't get along with them in company A or in company B, well, your life will be miserable. Although the company's value is fit, you have the necessary strengths, and here's a position, right? That is theoretically a sweet spot. But people can make or break the enjoyment of, of your work. That's something to keep into in consideration. If someone tells you, oh, don't go into marketing, it's horrible. Well, it's maybe ho horrible for them, but you're not that person. It might very well resonate with you, and it might very well resonate in one specific environment. So career planning is a long process, and the only person in charge of that process is you. Take advantage of all resources out there. Take advantage of your mentors, of your advisors, of career fairs, of networking events of all kinds. Connect with speakers on LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn, so I'm happy to connect with you. Just send a brief note that we met here and that you participated in, in that workshop. And I'm pretty sure one of my connections could be potentially helpful for you later. And I'm happy to introduce you to anyone in my network. 